as a comedian, he can quite literally stretch like no other. But behind the many fearless faces of Jim Carrey is a journey which has transcended laughter. I like it a lot. Born in Newmarket, Ontario in 1962, James Eugene Carey's comedy dreams started young. By age 10, Carey was so confident in his impersonation skills, he wrote a letter to Carol Burnett asking for a role on her show. The show didn't cast him, but Carey didn't give up. Even when his mother fell ill, his dad lost his job, and the family found themselves homeless. The Careys always made time for comedy. During a performance at Yuck Yucks, Carey caught the eye of Rodney Dangerfield, who hired the young Canadian to open for him and lost faith. Vegas. After touring with Dangerfield, Carey set his sights on film and TV. He auditioned for Saturday Night Live in 1980, but wasn't offered a job. On the NBC show, he's now hosted three times, mind you. You are two for return immediately! <laughs> but a role on In Living Color changed everything. I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years. Most comedians worked their whole lives for the number of hits Jim Carrey enjoyed in 1994 alone. Alrighty then. After Ace Ventura, Pet Detective became a cult hero in February, The Mask debuted in theaters in July, and by December, Lloyd Christmas was in a little town called Aspen. <laughs> We're there. <laughs> Carey reportedly made $7 million for Dumb and Dumber, nearly 20 times his Ace Ventura payday earlier that same year. There you go. There you go. In 1995, Carey doubled down with an Ace Ventura sequel, making more than enough to cash that famous check. In 1996, Carey became the first actor to command $20 million for a single picture when he starred in The Cable Guy. Well, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. Though he continued to prove he could dazzle audiences with crowd-pleasing hits like Liar Liar and Bruce Almighty, a different side of Jim Carrey was clearly coming into focus. <laughs> committed to picking parts that would stretch him somehow, the fourth wall-breaking Truman Show managed to prove the rubbery, chaotic comedian we know and love is just as good when he's contained. Literally. In 1999, Carey's portrayal of comedian Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon found him so utterly devoted to his craft that his method acting later became the subject of its own documentary. I was thinking, how far should I take this? How far would Andy take it? If his penchant for darker characters wasn't obvious in 2000 when he portrayed the Grinch, Carey's performance opposite Kate Winslet in 2004's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind made it clear that the fearless funny man craved tragedy as much as comedy. You said so go. There's such disdain, you know? Following his Golden Globe nomination for Eternal Sunshine, Carey worked steadily over the next decade, alternating between big-budget family-friendly films like Yes Man and Mr. Popper's Penguins and darker material. After reuniting with the Farrelly brothers in 2016 to revisit his iconic role of Lloyd Christmas in Dumb and Dumber 2, Carey returned to a place he hadn't called home in nearly 25 years, television. What I like about you is the other stuff, the inside stuff. After a four-year hiatus from film, Carey is back in theaters playing the arch nemesis to another 90s icon, Sonic the Hedgehog. I just thought you might like a latte with steamed Austrian goat milk. Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! Whether his future holds more movies or more TV, more light or more dark, you can bet Jim Carey will approach it with all he's got.